Music just isn't as good as it used to be, and that's a fact. That's how some of these music executive artists feel, and I think it could objectively be true. We're gonna make an argument for both sides in this video, but first we gotta start with a statement from Jimmy Iovine, head of Interscope Records, you know, the fame label. Well, he's not there anymore, but you know, he's done it and created a lot of great artist careers. Obviously, Beats by Dre, he was a part of that deal, and he's over at Apple Music. He himself has said, too many people today are making records for TikTok. TikTok always has to catch one, man. True, man. They used to make records for radio, but now it's TikTok. That's why all these pop records sound exactly the same. So if you're making records like that, making records with this formula, then you're going to start seeing big hits written and recorded with AI. What? The more you follow a formula, I guess he's saying, the easier oh, you are to re replicate and replace. Okay. They're following formulas. What happened in music is fame has replaced great. It's happened in society, basically. Fame has replaced great. So there's that whole argument that talent isn't really that much of a thing. They don't care about that. It's just a popularity contest. I think there's some merit to this. And that's his reason, his big reason why. Fame has replaced great, which is why music isn't as good as it used to be. Artists are making so much money in so many different places. Matter of fact, I'll get to that point last because that's a whole other point. So we can address that part. Let's start here. All right. Do you think fame has replaced great? Um, yes and no. I say yes because I think fame. Well, let me say this. I think air quote fame is more accessible than being great. I do think that like the, the, it's perceived as easier to become famous than it is to make a song that everyone thinks is great. Mm. My counter to that would be fame is not the same as it used to be. Like fame is not an easy thing to come by. Popularity is easy to come by, right? But we've seen for years at this point that internet popularity doesn't always translate to real world fame. There are, yes. there are TikTokers with millions of followers that could walk down the street and no one bad an eye. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so they're not really famous. They're famous within a, a bubble, I guess, like this space, but they're not really like famous in the sense that I think they're talking about. So, but from an artist perspective, um, or I would think from an artist perspective, internet popularity is much easier to attain than being quote unquote great because music taste is so fragmented now. Like there's, there isn't, truly an artist I feel like that every corner of the music industry considers to be great because there's too many options right we know that for right. for every for every 95 percent you show me I can think of an artist that has the five percent that you're missing and so it's hard for me to see you as this hundred percent so here's the issue though right because overall music might be more trash than it used to be or not as good as it used to be, whatever measurement, right? But it's not all the artist's fault. Artists, it is not your fault if your music is trash unless it's not for these reasons <laughs> that I'm about to state. Artists are today are living in a completely different business model. For one, yeah. right, we talk about the superstar and what you're saying, right? It's harder to control attention, yep. all right? So it's harder to generate a superstar because it's so many people, so many eyes looking in so many places. Yep. If it's hard for me to create a superstar, which is where I'm going to get the biggest gains and biggest benefit, then I'm not going to invest as much money into it, mm -hmm. right? If it's harder for me to make as much money in this business, meaning in a superstar or just for my creative output in general or my investment in general, then I'm not going to support the creative. So artists aren't getting funded to the levels that they used to, right? We don't see $1 million Hype Williams videos, yeah, right? Fair. Like, so you would think, oh, well, what if I still had that $1 million in my budget? But then now creating a video is so much cheaper. So now I got even more money to put in other places. No, nah, it didn't work like that. It's just like, nope, everything shrank. So artists don't have the same level of back, uh, back end support, the ones that we get to see. And now the ones we get to see are just a dude in, in the room that might have just popped up and went viral one day. Mm -hmm. Right. Which doesn't mean that. It's not possible to one day get that support or whatever. It just means if you're a random person in the room, you didn't get as many resources 
financially as well because that does matter when it comes to bringing artistic vision to light that's why artists complain about about money or they talk about other people having money that they don't have access to like that is a part of the game so if i don't have that right and then on the other side of all this if i'm stuck in this model where i have to create content i got so this beautiful independent like landscape to exist in today no, I don't have to be signed by a label and I could be successful without being signed by a label. But that means I have more responsibilities. So that means I got to create content. I got to watch my own books. I got to get a manager and I got to damn near run the team myself and build my audience myself. So I don't even have as much time objectively to put into the art. So the artists back then had more focus just on the art itself while it was being ran by other people around them. So if you think about less time being put into the art, for the artist and like less focus being able to be put into the art, then that probably takes a, a you know a hit on quality, right? Yeah. Then you say computers allow more of us to create this content, right, and put this music out without being tethered and, and broken down by gatekeepers. Great, I can get my music to Jacory, right, by myself, but also. I can do this in my room, in my studio. Accessibility is nice, but isolation also creates creative mm -hmm. chasms, right? Where I don't get to collaborate with, let's just say the three of us who are in this room right now, all right? If we're all collaborating, we're gonna come up with ideas mm -hmm. and you don't have artists collaborating as much. So now you got less people involved. Yep. That's gonna take a hit, yep. right? Yep. It doesn't mean you can't do great music by yourself, but all our goats the the favorite artists that we have they got a couple songs that they did like that are just them but they got a lot of songs that were them and a lot of others yeah. you know what i'm saying like you're not even in the same room as the producer no more yeah all right so you don't get as much money you don't you have to work harder and have less focus on just the music itself mm -hmm. and and you don't really have as collaborative as an environment a truly collaborative we're in the same space like jamming together versus, oh, I sent some shit over and now it's asynchronous in how we build a song. Like those three things to me objectively make it harder for there to be like better music in terms of the top, the top of the top end. Doesn't mean there's not a lot of good music and some great music out there, but it's harder to be as much great music because you don't have as much focus on it. Yeah, and I add on top of that, right? It's, it's everything you said and everything you said has led to more competition, really, right? More competition. more competition. And I will argue, right, he brought up the point of like, you know, when artists made music for the radio. And so let's just say, let's just say what, the last time I would argue artists were making music for the radio was mid, early 2000s. So let's say mid, early 2000s okay. and back, right? And up, I guess, yeah, up. It was not uncommon for you to know about like, 12 artists that came out that year yeah. right so the industry at any given year might introduce 12 to 20 new artists to the masses and this becomes the new pool of people that they're comparing um, comparing each other to to say who is great maybe and then maybe artists that came before them right so the uh, artists come out in 2000s they can compare to the other 19 artists that came out this year and then maybe 50 of the artists that came from the, the, the four or five decades before versus today Today, I don't even know. I can't even. Be, I can't even think of the number of, of of amount of artists that get introduced to the average consumer on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? So it goes back to what I was saying earlier. Like, what you had as your model for great used to be a lot smaller. Like, I could look at these five mega artists that were popping and be like, okay, this is what a great artist looks like, right? They all have these these same qualities, not knowing at that time that there were there were thousands of other artists that tried to be where they were. We just don't know about them because the channels at that point didn't allow them to make it that far. And so we think that all our music was all sunshine and great. And every artist making music back then just had this amazing bone. And it's like, bro, no, you just don't know about the other trash artists that existed at that time. Like, I've been in, like, Goodwills and, you know, like, thrift stores and record shops before. And, you know, you go to, like, the little dollar bin where they have, like, you know, some, some records for sale. You start saying, you're like, damn, who? I ain't never heard of... Willie Earl James, and I ain't never heard of, <laughs> I ain't never heard of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whoever the artist is, and I, I, that's when it clicked for me, it was literally the last time I was going through, and I was like, man, bro, like, damn, Willie Earl James, you just didn't have the resources to, 
to make it to the level of like a James Brown or, or, or whoever, right? But the world will never know about you, and we just going to think that that's, that time period was great because we know James Brown, we know whoever, you know what I'm saying? And so I think that's where it becomes unfair to artists in a certain instances. Like, it's all the things you said. It's increased competition. So, of course, the quality is going to suffer um, because it even in order for me to survive to get to the point of being decent is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Let alone talk about staying yes. in the long enough to be great. We talking about just getting to the point of being okay. That's another thing, yeah. Because <laughs> a lot of times you're not only are you going to go through some type of artist development in the older days, mm -hmm. but again, you're just in it so long. The time you're working on your craft before you hit mm -hmm. is a whole nother level yeah. versus we could create a song right now and if it hits, we'll literally, without trying to be an artist, have a hit song, and then there's people who will have that moment happen, and then decide they want to take being an artist seriously because they just happen to have a moment, mm -hmm. all right? Like, so it's, it's, and then of course you have a lot of young artists that they call themselves artists, but they aren't seriously artists, mm -hmm. right? And what I mean by that is, how many people like, like to play basketball, right? right? There's a lot of people who play basketball, but you have this filter of, oh, yeah, you're on the organized team. So then you would have to go to the organized team in college and then you would go to the NBA. Right. Mm -hmm. But people who love playing basketball, they still like are going to play in the gym in college. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine if those people, because they had some kind of crazy dunk or put up some crazy points in the pickup game, all of a sudden could be launched into stardom <laughs> and be threatening somebody in the NBA out of nowhere and then that was happening every day that's what, that's what i tried to do with hot sauce that one year they did and they they were very close and that, that <laughs> i actually saw a whole documentary on that like nike wasn't having that they 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 got in and went out of here <laughs> but um like that's kind of what artists are going through where you're in that phase where you're uh, many of them are just young and they love it they're just doing it for their joy but they're not necessarily going through that growing pain and commitment of saying, oh, I'm going to do this for a career seriously, seriously. Beyond those initial pains, it's just like, oh yeah, I'm doing it for fun, and I kind of like being an artist, I like making music, it's a thing I do, and then it's popping. Where, and I didn't have to go through any of the pain, but when you had to go through the pain just to get seen, it's a whole different product. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, and that makes me think of another point too, right? Like, artists don't get to develop in silence anymore. Right, like we, we watch the artists develop, right? Because even if you're, to your point, I'm a small artist, I started making music, I got 30 followers. If I'm one of those 30 followers, I'm, I'm gonna damn near see every step of it. I'm, I'm gonna see when he or she goes from being nervous on live to being confident, right? I'm gonna see, I'm gonna hear when, you know, his song uh, sounds like it got recorded in the trash can to the point that that shit sounds like you Like, they don't, you don't get to develop in silence anymore as an artist, so we see all of it, the good and the bad. This is when we get to that <laughs> last point. So let's talk about the fact that most artists fail to understand that it doesn't take forever to monetize your audience. We had an artist literally begin to take off and make $20,000 from his brand new audience in the same month. But how is that possible? It's because we're in a new era, baby. Yes, you wanna to continue to build a relationship over time, but the first time you make money from your audience can happen today if you understand the new age music marketing funnel for artists. So if you wanna hear about this approach and how you can apply it to yourself, I made a completely free video to watch at www.nolabelsnecessary.com slash monetize. You gotta make sure you put the www, or if you're on YouTube, you can find the link in the description and check out how we've helped monetize artists for completely free. I promise it'll completely change how you see things. Jimmy said, artists are making so much money in different places, which is fantastic, but after they have a hit record and can earn a lot of money on Instagram and all this stuff, I feel like a lot of artists are taking their foot off the gas in the record making category, and that affects the quality of the work. Yes, yep. yes. So that a lot of that comes from, hey, I didn't say, oh, I want to be an artist, I got to be an artist, and this is my thing. I was just making music and fucking off anyway, and it just happened to take off. Or, the, or even if I thought myself was serious, it was serious level one, two, three, and whatever that pains looked like, but I would have tapped out if I had to go do level four or five before I popped off. But now I'm able to start popping and experience certain things on level two and three, mm -hmm. so I'm cool, right? And then I'm going to start 
making money on Instagram, merch, all these other ways to make money, which is good because you want artists to be able to make more money. But again, that's going to detract for those who aren't serious. Now, of course, again, there are there are artists, you know, we know artists that are like, yeah, I'm about the music. I'm figuring out the rest of it. And they and we have watched them figuring out a lot of these other elements to it. But they're still like, yo, no, this is music to the core. But I understand the game and era that I exist in. Mm -hmm. They are out there. But because of the models that exist today, we're getting a lot much, a lot more of the noise. Entertainment industry as a whole is facing this. All right. Streaming models need quantity. So everybody is suffering because I don't necessarily need the best movie of all time because most of these people are watching movies passively while they're at work anyway. And they're stay at home, which is increasing the demand for content anyway. So I just needed to be decent enough for it to be on. You don't got to be the best movie because when I had your undivided attention back in the day and they had to go to the movie theater and do all that. They're like, no, nah, look. I'm not going through the barrier of getting ready, getting on a date, putting on my, my smell good, as my grandma would call it, <laughs> driving on down, paying for popcorn, like, because you do all that, this movie better be good, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But, oh yeah, I'm just, I, I, I'm playing the movie during work or whatever, some chill stuff, then it's a, it's a lower ass. So, like, they're just like, well, yeah, we need more content. We need more content. And it's expensive to pay these people who fit time to be great and know their value. Why would I pay them all that money when I, <laughs> when I could get 10 of the low value people who just trying to get their foot in the door? Like, everybody's facing this same struggle when it comes to demand for content and volume. And we know it's messed up. We know it's messed up. But I don't think anybody sees a way out right now. And I don't think NFTs are the way out either. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, devil's advocate a little bit. I don't, I don't even know if it's messed up. I think it's just, I think it's, there was a, a, a point in time where I'm pretty sure that, you know, the artists in the 80s and 90s and 2000s mm -hmm. probably were like, man, I wish there was, I wish I could do what I want to do. I wish I could, you know, sure. release music with no, no powers that be stopping me. I wish I could, you know, talk to my people directly. I wish that, you know, there wasn't this invisible barrier stopping me from being successful as ours. I wish that there were other ways to make money other than just the streaming and the pub. But we are seeing the results of those <laughs> wishes come true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like in the movies with genies where, like, like the genie grants a wish, but there's a consequence to the wish. Oh, yeah, you know man. I said something like that the other <laughs> day, man, where I, was, I forgot whatever I said. I said, hey, God. And I was like, hey, but you know my heart into specificity, you know what I mean? None of those okie dokes, you know. <laughs> I didn't know that. Nah, I was like, nope. I want this in this way without these consequences because that is a thing. And it, I, I think that's a good example for real. Like a lot of these things we did wish for, but people didn't consider about the responsibilities that they came with, mm -hmm. how much that takes away from your mental and being able to just focus on the art itself. Yeah, because that, that'd be the thing, bro. Like especially the higher level music industry execs, the one that's been around for a long time, they always pull that card, bro. It was years ago they were saying, like, hey, the power's in your hands. You you build your business. You do, I don't know if Jimmy's ever said that, but there's enough of them that said it to, I don't know, I feel like he did. Captain know? Planet said the power is yours. So we can, that's close enough. Yeah, Captain Planet, bro. Like got two cameos in the <laughs> power, man. Who, who knew? <laughs> I feel like they don't know who you're talking about, bro. It's like three niggas in the comments that know <laughs> Captain Planet. <laughs> but I feel like, um, Dang, I lost, man. You made me lose my point, bro. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I completely lost it, bro. Now I'm thinking about Captain Planet. Oh, uh, and I was saying, the, okay, I remember I was going with it. The, the higher end of music, music industry is like, you know, especially the ones that have been around for a long time. I always made the case, but power's in your hand. You got the power that be. You control your destiny. You control your path. You got all the resources to make X, Y, and Z happen. They push all of this really pro artist messaging that makes everybody feel like they can do it. Mm -hmm. That result results in everybody feeling like they can do it, mm -hmm. which then results in everybody attempting to try it. And then we run into these issues that we get, you know what I'm saying? And that's how I look at it, bro. You can't have it both ways. Either the industry is limited and controlled, and you know what I'm saying? There are, you know, X amount of great artists that get pushed out every year, which, you know, we ain't never going back that shit. Or it's the fucking wild, wild west. And, you know, to that point, the what I like about today's structure of the industry is that the people have a lot more power to pick mm -hmm. who um, becomes popular, successful. And I would argue fans have never cared about none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Fans don't care about 
quality as much as we think. Like quality is subjective. You know what I'm saying? Like if I like it and I think it's a good song, fans don't care about quality. I don't think so. I think they might have a different measure, of course. All right, here's the thing. Okay, maybe fans, not quality. And then fans don't have a true sense of taste, most of them. So they're just going to take what they're fed, right? And yeah. I'm a kid. This is all the music I know. That's all I have to judge off of. Yeah. 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 That's, a, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't know. I think, like, and what we see now is the result of very, very small pockets of fans and consumers. And they find something they like and they champion it. Yeah. And they champion it long enough that it becomes something. And... Like let's say twenty percent of a given market push something hard enough to make it break through. There's gonna be assembly that eighty percent that doesn't like it, right? Because th- that it goes against what the eighty percent considers to be good or great or whatever, and it was championed by this small group, and it just pushed it to the point to where not where it was accepted by the mass group, but it was at least noticed and recognized by the mass group. That is what we see in music today: a bunch of really small pockets of consumers and artists talking to each other until one of that thing breaks through. And then to your point earlier, right, sometimes that shit breaks through on accident. Yeah. You know, like I didn't I didn't mean to leave over here. I don't know how I got over there, you know what I'm saying? But now I'm over there. And then they judging me and critiquing me as if I was always trying to be over there. <laughs> See, and that makes me think about the fact that I think some people's gripe is the absence of unanimous greatness. Or yeah. as close as you can yeah. get to that. Yeah, we ain't right? never getting that. Right? <laughs> it's and, never coming back. <laughs> and a lot of people champion this more fragmented era in space. But the thing is, I always say, like, sometimes you're sold on a dream that doesn't exist by the time you get old enough to cash in on that dream. Mm-hmm. So I'm sold this dream of there's these massive artists, these superstars who are so influential. By the time I got to a certain age, though, Everything's fragmented, and it's not even possible. It's, it's very hard to become that level of superstar. Yeah. The odds are that much smaller, or it's just not possible. So can I be satisfied, even with a solid fan base and living as a career, when I still have that void, that gap? I think there's a lot of artists that are struggling with that, mm-hmm. right? And when you have the beauty of this indie space, the fragmentation has its own pros, but it has its own cons. And I think over time, people will start to acknowledge the beauty of something that does touch everyone versus right now we're over indexing on something being so individualistic and touching a small base as if that's better. Just because we were maybe missing that to a degree and they yeah. started to over index on something that's maybe homogenous and hyper commercialized. But now I think we're, yeah, we're going to eventually get back to that that um, equilibrium where it's just like, yeah, all right, I do want to be fragmented. I do want to have my tribe. But no, nah, it is dope to have a moment where the world is like, yo, this shit is moment. You know what I mean? Like It's different to, hmm, let's see, as a, a kid. And this might be different. Uh, everybody else might have a different experience. But let's just say, all right, it's one thing. For me to just get a gift, right, on my birthday. And that's cool. I'm celebrating my birthday. Mm-hmm. It's another thing for it to be Christmas and everybody's getting gifts and the entire environment and setup in the world is like setting, is creating a vibe together, right, and taking off of work together, right? Mm-hmm. And that's just a whole other level. And you can't do that on an individual level, right? right yeah. It's like my birthday versus Christmas. And I think that's part of what we're missing. I mean, we see that in every other part of the world, too. Like, like holidays, everything. Like, everybody's like, nah, I'm in my own bag. And then people get all, you know, everybody starts to feel, like, grumpy. Or, you know what I mean? If you look online, and everybody hating in their pockets. So music is, as always, like a reflection of society. Mm-hmm. And, you know, art is that. Because here's the last thing that I want to say to that. People like to act like, oh, just because we have so much more music, it it means that there is more greatness out there or accessibility is like the final frontier for what art needs. Is that true in every other art though? Because drawing, right? Painting has been extremely accessible for a long period of time, right? 
does that mean the stuff that I was drawing is as great as somebody else who spent years really putting into it? Like, I could trick you and make you think that all oh, these other artists did, it, and, you know what I mean, did it and put my brand on it, but does that really make it great? So it's like, I don't know if it's just making things more accessible is is why things are better. Oh, there's more music than ever. There's more art than, than ever. Cool. But there's been paintings everywhere and everybody not about to throw a painting from a rando on their wall. You know, like what really is making this great? Again, that's the opinion, that's subjective. But my artists today, I think they're in a dilemma that's way different than the old times, why it's, which is why it's not com fair to compare com directly. Jimmy stating radio means this isn't something new. The TikTok shit is not something new. There's already been formulas that people have followed over and over again. So I hate when they like to say that. However, the business model itself and what gets commercialized and put to the forefront today does not lend to as much greatness getting seen or created as it used to. Oh, yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. Artists, managers, whoever's watching, what do y'all think? Like, we, we covered this from a lot of different angles, so we're going to make this a whole pie episode. By the way, we've made a change. If you want to listen to full episodes, check it out on Spotify, Apple Music, the DSPs, if you want to listen to full podcast episodes. However, if you just want to continue to watch clips and get the snippets, check out the next video popping up right now.